Alright, so here we have the uh, code for project 4. Uh, object avoidance, I'll begin with the sensor testing our main file, which um, basically this just sets up the application and includes my utility functions. We init pins, clocks, peripherals, just everything for the board. Printf for the hello world is just make sure the program started that can be commented out. Um, we have our two functions which are found in our utilities um, functions here and then we set up a interrupt for our switch one on the board. This is just a five second delay so that way the robot doesn't just start moving the second I hit the switch we get second to back away um, from the robot make sure it runs smoothly. We have our main function, object avoidance, to avoid to be able to move forward and avoid any walls that are in front of it. And then I added another little function, happy dance. So when it finishes off its root, it does like a little back up, a little happy dance. Uh, and then we have a just busy while loop to keep the program running. Um, I'll begin with our utilities, eight, our header file, which sets up all our functions. We set up our ports. We have a function to move the servo around, which is gonna control the ultrasonic sensor, move it left, right, forward at certain angles. The integer selects which angle it is. We have zero, 90, and 180. We have our delay function, which you saw here to um, delay the robot for five seconds. So 1,000 in there is one second. Um, zoom, zoom is a function we don't, I don't use here. This was just to test to make sure the robot moved forward. It's just a fun, funny name for like move forward. Uh, robot move is what is used to move the wheels. Um, right here, there's three integers past. The parameters are better explained in this file, which I'll get to. Full break is gonna be used whenever we just wanna stop the motors, just stop the robot. Uh, switch one pressed is the Boolean function that's used here um, to set up the switch interrupt. We have to set up switch one the interrupt to make sure it's used and then I have a left turn and a right turn function which um, I don't need to really control the PWM or the power cycle of the wheels of the robot because making a 90 degree left turn or making a 90 degree right turn is just fine we don't need to curve around to do that um, then I have my um, two few main functions here the two main ones are get distance and object avoidance. Get distance work gathers input from the sonar sensor and provides output to the robot, measures the echo line, which is one of the lines on the robot, and develops a function to send a trigger pulse. Uh, takes that length of time and converts it to centimeters. A conversion we were given is um, the microseconds uh, of time that's given back divided by 58 just happens to be equivalent to a centimeter. However, we don't really need to know centimeters if you think about it. We could just get an arbitrary value of distance, like if we were given a certain minute of time and we just know that the value 1642 corresponds to the distance that we want to turn. Um, however, divided by 58 gives us much better numbers, and in my case, um, it comes out to about 190, 200 centimeters is where we're close enough to a wall that we'd like to turn. Object avoidance is the main function that's going to, it has a if, if statements and a, right now a for loop just so the robot finishes after a certain amount of turns, but you could easily do a while and that way it would just move on until we hit a certain condition. I believe the certain condition I would go with at this point would be a complete blocked in circle, like a square. So if it checks left, right, forward, and backwards, and it's completely blocked in, then we would determine that it has nowhere to go and the robot would stop. Moving, happy dance is just a little function added at the end, so it does a little dance once it's made it. Happy little guy. Um, going into our see our utilities actual code file. Um, I have a little comment up here just to help me with the uh, C and V values for the servo. So knowing uh, 1500 would be a 90 degree right turn, zero would be 2500. Um, we set up our ports, so we set up ports A, B, C, D. 
our clock timings, Oscar clock, the ports, the port D2 and A13 are the main ones that are used for this project that sets up the echo and sonar of the ultrasonic sensor. And those are used here. Um, it would take a while to explain this code, maximum power for the uh, motors. I, I don't care if it's going slow or fast uh, at this point. So move servo is gonna be our next function. So if the angle, the integer angle we have here is a 90, the CNV is 1400, um, duty cycle angle 180 is 400 and zero is 2500. These are set values. So the 2500, no matter where on this robot right here, no matter if I put the robot on like a diagonal over here, if I put in 2500, it will snap the robot back here. Those are absolute angles. Um, then we move to our delay function, which we've used multiple times in other projects. This just creates a millisecond delay timer. Robot move is a function that moves the three integers we had are wheel, direction, and speed. At this point in time, the speed is pretty set up. Um, we have some uh, PD, PID control, just make sure that the robot uh, isn't just zooming off. Um, so say I did one, one, and speed, that's gonna be wheel one, direction one, and the, the speed will just be whatever I put in there. I've been putting 100. 100 is what I use when controlling the robot. So that will move the left wheel forward with a CNV value of 100. Now if I did 1, 2, 1, it would move the left wheel backward. Sorry, 1, 2, 100, it would move the left wheel backward at speed 100, CNV value of 100. The same would change if we did wheel 2. So 2 is the right wheel. So if I wanted the robot to move forward, I would do wheel one, direction one, speed 100, wheel two, direction one, speed 100. So both left and right wheels are moving forward at a speed of 100, a CNV value of 100. Then we have two functions, right turn and left turn. Uh, right turn, if you think about it, we want the left wheel to move forward and the right wheel to move backward. And I'll just shift the robot uh, to the right. And now if we do the opposite, it'll shift the robot to the left, right? Move the left wheel back, front or the right wheel forward, it'll shift the robot right. So those are our two functions, right turn and left turn. Void brake, uh, full brake is just gonna stop the left and right motors no matter where they are. Zoom zoom is a function that doesn't move, um, well, that isn't used, but it was just used to move the robot, as you can see here, for half a second and then stop. That was just testing it. We set up our switch one. We set up if it's pressed or not, this is just um, a Boolean returned value, whether or not the switch has been pressed. And then we have our main function, get distance. So it's fully explained here in the code. Uh, I have a print statement just to make sure we can see whenever that, um, whenever this function is being executed. We, um, you can see the whole explanation here. You can pause it, read it. And this is what gives us um, our value at the end. So we take the count at the end minus the the time. So we get a full time. We, we evaluate the time at the start, the time at the end. And we also multiply the time at the end by 10,000, which is our mod value. So when the, the clock reaches the top, our, our mod value, the top, when it overflows, we count how many times it does that because every time it does that, that's another 10,000. So if it overflowed five times, that means that clock value at least went to 50,000 or more. And then we divide it by 58 to get our centimeters and the centimeters is returned. This function is used in our object avoidance. So we, mer we move the servo forward at the beginning. Here I just have it going in a for loop eight times. You could do a while to have it going on forever. We move the robot forward and we gather the distance every time. So if the distance is less than 200 and forward, it's going to move the servo um, 180 degrees, and then it's going to check that distance. And then if that distance is fine, it will just move the servo back and go in that open direction. If that wall, so say there's a wall on the left now, it'll turn the servo the other way, check that wall. 
If that direction's open, it'll move the servo back and it'll go to the right, it'll go to the other direction. And now we have a last one here, um, right here, this last if statement is if it's completely surrounded. So it checks forward, it checks left, it checks right. And now if, if all three of those are bad, then it's gonna turn left twice, it's gonna make a U-turn. And then our final function is happy dance, which just has it move back and forth. It just does a little happy dance at the end. Um, and now, so that's the explanation of the code. You can pause and read any of my comments as I walked through it. Um, and now I'll show you the demonstration. So here I have my robot. Here is the demonstration video test. We have our board here. Uh, there we go. And our motor driver, which is in here, which, connects everything together. We have a servo mounted here with an ultrasonic sensor. Looks like the eyes of the robot. And that's the main focus of this demonstration is to show the ability to recognize walls or objects in front of it at distances. There will be four tests. The first one will detect a wall in front of it. The second one will detect a wall to the right and it should turn left. The, sec the third will detect a wall to the l left and it will turn right. And lastly, uh, it should, if it's surrounded, comes to a dead end, it will turn around. The only exception to this is the wall on the left. It checks if it can go right first. So if there's a wall on the left and it can go right, it will not check and see if there's a wall on the left. It will just turn right because it can. So here there's a five second delay. I will begin by hitting the switch interrupt. Now the robot will move forward and detect the wall in front of it. There it goes, it detected it. Nothing on the right, nothing on the left. So it turns left. Now we're gonna detect the wall on the right. We have it here. We'll do our five, five second interrupt. And we begin moving, it detected forward, detects right, checks left, left is available, turns left. Now we come to a special case where it will check the left wall um, and it, it will move to the right. Issue with this is it doesn't really know if the, if there's a space, it's gonna, it won't check one, it just knows it can move but it's, uh, that's built-in logic that it can sense. We'll see it here. It should notice the uh, left wall. Notice the forward, it checks right. So it knows that right is able to move. It's able to move to the right. So since it knows it's able to move to the right, it doesn't check if it can move to the left. Now we are in our final case. And this one, we have the wall on the left and I have my skateboard here on the right so to act as another wall and it should turn around. I'll, I'll gauge the five second interrupt. And it should turn around. So it checks right, checks left, and now it turns around.